Before their names made headlines across the nation, they were a military couple enjoying their lives in paradise. They were stationed in Hawaii. She loved being an army soldier's wife. But everything is torn apart by a sudden and vicious crime. We found blood stains on the mattress, blood on the floor. The purpose of coming was specifically to kill. The search for answers unleashes a tidal wave of sinful secrets. There was sex with men, sex with women, sex for money, sex for fun. It wasn't a love triangle, it was a love hexagon. There was going to be a number of people who potentially had an animus towards them. The truth reveals a sordid tale of betrayal, lies, and a secret romance that ignited deadly passions. He said, I need my desire taken care of. It had to have been a double life, a complete double life. You're starting to realize that the person that you thought you knew, you don't. November 15th, 2014, Honolulu, Hawaii. It's just after 6 a.m. when 911 dispatchers receive a distressed phone call from the residents of Army medic Michael Walker and his wife, Catherine. Michael Walker is the individual who called 911. He says that he sees his wife on the floor with heavy blood pooling all over her body. Tell me exactly what happened. I just got home from work, and then I came upstairs. I saw a lot of blood on the bed, and then I saw my wife on the floor. And then I called you guys. Do you know what's happening? I, I don't. Is she breathing? No, I took no clothes. Her skin is cold. There's a lot of blood on the floor, and there's a knife. Within minutes, first responders arrive at the Walker's home. But as they approach Catherine's body, it's clear the 38-year-old is beyond saving. Kathy had stab wounds that were very significant, and it was apparent that she was absolutely deceased. Michael Walker was in quite of a state of panic at that moment. Any loss of life is horrific and sad, and that does put a weight on investigators where you do want to figure out who was responsible for such an egregious crime. Any loss of life is horrific and sad. And, but I think in this case, the more we understood about Kathy and about her family, that does put a weight on investigators where you do want to figure out who was responsible for such an egregious crime. Um, and so as far as anxiety as an investigator, I remember being up at two, three o'clock in the morning by myself at the office, writing these warrants, going through, just numerous text messages and emails trying to figure out what happened because you're constantly worried that evidence is going to expire if you don't find probable cause to say get text message content from Verizon then Verizon's going to write over those messages and then those messages are gone forever you'll never recover them and so you're constantly worried if I don't get to this next piece of evidence fast enough I may never get it and if I never get it is it possible that someone like Lisa and someone like Walker will get away with doing this to Kathy who by all accounts seem to be just one of the sweetest people out there for someone like Lisa I've described Lisa's very non-emotional description of what an awful, horrific thing she did to Kathy Walker. So when you hear someone talk about stabbing a knife through and through somebody's neck, especially when it's somebody like Catherine, it's hard to imagine them in any way, shape, or form also themselves being a victim. But in this particular investigation, one thing that pushed us so hard as investigators to keep finding every bit of evidence that we could was that 
even though what Lisa did was horrific and inexcusable and awful, we also understood that she had some weaknesses of her own that she struggled with. And there was somebody, namely Michael Walker, who understood those weaknesses and absolutely took advantage of those to do something that he didn't have the courage to do himself. Um, and then two, even more egregious, was the fact that Lisa being arrested, he was going to be okay with her taking the fall for this charge. And then he wanted to be the victim. He wanted to collect that life insurance money. He wanted to be viewed by family as a victim. He wanted the military to come around alongside him and his church to take care of him. Um, meanwhile, understanding this dark secret and stuffing it away. And so when it came time to sentencing, I think it was very appropriate that the judge saw that Mike, even though he was not the one who shoved the knife through Catherine's neck, he was in fact the one who was more responsible for this. And so while there's no way that anyone could excuse what Lisa did, it is very clear that if she had not met Mike, she would never have killed anybody. And he took advantage of that and put her in a situation where she did what she did and now she's suffering the consequences for 30 years. As this stuff is unfolding with Mike and the information, more information is coming out, and maybe not necessarily even officially, but as rumor mills are going and as information is being officially released, um, it is, you're, you're starting to realize that the person that you thought you knew, you don't. And I guess to some extent, we all have that, right? We all live a double life and we all have things that we don't know about each other. But with Mike, it was the complete opposite of what I knew about where his standards and his morals were. And I know that that can be a slippery thing. Maybe it started with him doing something bad and going into more bad things and becoming this desensitized monster. But there was a, you go through those cycles again because here I am trying to support Mike as a spouse who's lost his, his wife and as a fellow military member who's going through these trial and, and, and feeling alone and doing all those things and knowing that he's going to have to go through a lot of stuff with his command and, and, and whatnot, you've got, I've got that, and, but then I'm starting to see that he's the guy who caused all this. He's the reason that this is going on, and so now I'm starting to feel it. Going through those cycles of feeling anger and resentment and you know, at first it's shock, like, no way. There's no way, why would he do that? And then it's like, why would he do that, you know? What a piece of junk. When I first found out that Kathy was killed and then shortly later learned that she had been stabbed to death, I was, it was horrific. To think that she, and I've never, obviously I've never been stabbed really, and so I don't know how it feels like, but apparently it's, it's a brutal way to get killed and it's you're not you don't die instantly and so to think that she went through that and that she had to be stabbed to death um, I, there was a little bit of me that thought like well why did she get why did she deserve to die that way you know she didn't luckily we most of us who knew Kathy had our faith to, to kind of lean back on during that time. And that was kind of the overarching thought was, you know what, Kathy was such an amazing woman that it was her time to go, you know? And, and that's why these bad, bad things happen to good people, right? And so we, we kind of rested our laurels or whatever you want to call it. We, we put our, our trust in knowing like, Yes, she died a brutal death and that it's horrible. Like we are baffled by that. But we know that she did the things that she was supposed to while she was on earth. She left a legacy of service and kindness and love. In my 25 years of covering TV news, this case definitely took me in the most bizarre directions. Just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier with this love triangle turned love hexagon, then it comes up to these child porn charges and the court martial. This case 
never let you take a breath. It was just constantly changing and moving. And it, it, it was so sad and so bizarre at the same time, how this woman who everybody loved and only cared about her husband and the church and starting a family w was really blinded by all that he was doing behind her back. It was very sad. It was, it was just a very strange case, a strange trial. I'll never forget this case. One thing about Michael is he was, uh, you know, living a double life. He presented himself well in the community, well at work. But then he also had this other side that uh, very few people knew about. Uh, the whole case is just a sad situation. Uh, anytime someone dies, but especially in this situation, uh, you know, all this could have been avoided. Uh, for whatever reason, Michael chose, I guess, the easy way out. Uh, to uh, He thought that the easiest way to, to get out of uh, his marriage was to kill his wife. Uh, and it's just very unfortunate, uh, you know, 30 and 35 years between Lisa and Michael is a long time uh, to serve in prison. Uh, I think justice was done in this case, uh, but, you know, we still feel sorry and our, and our thoughts and prayers goes out to the family of Kathy Walker because that's a, a hole and a void that can never be filled. This whole situation has solidified in my mind that, like, you never know what people are capable of. And you can either choose to live in such a way that you're like s paranoid about all that, or you can live like Kathy lived and live to serve despite what people are capable of. You know, I don't regret my decision to kind of try and stay neutral through this whole thing with Mike, but it just brought awareness to me that anyone is capable of doing such horrible things, but we can't live our lives in such a way that it would keep us from connecting. As a Christian, I pray that he is healed from the things that led to this horrible situation. I, I pray that he's able to achieve something in his life that helps his mother heal, that helps, that, that just helps. Um, I hope he finds God. I hope he actually finds a relationship with Jesus, because uh, I don't think he had one, a true one. Clearly he was capable of hiding things. <laughs> um, as a friend, And as a woman, I, I just want him to live through the consequences of what he did and, and what he took from us. Because she was truly a light. <laughs> Thank you.